previously on the Frontier Farmer. A log cabin is constructed. We need a few things that are going to help us live. So we need to clear some space. This is going to be perfect for us to place a little allotment for us to grow some food and some produce. We have carved a rectangular shape into the dark forest. So we have our well. We've got our lookout tower to keep an eye on wilderness and all sorts of other things. A hive which is going to be producing us honey on the regular which is very good and that hive is also going to help our new garden. There we go our potato plants are in. We are going to hopefully get enough money to purchase something which is going to help us manage all of these logs a lot better and then also we need to really start getting this area cleared. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Frontier Farmer at the Dark Forest. I'm starting off in the hunting pulpit this morning, having a little look out to see what's going on. And we're starting to get some lovely autumn colours coming through because it's now October. And that means we've got to get busy creating our field. We cleared out this space last time which got us quite a few logs. And I was just going to be checking in on the potatoes which we planted in our open garden last time. Hey hey, there we go. So a month has passed, a day, and we've now got three pallets worth of potatoes, which is fantastic. So we can now feed ourselves, we are now self-sufficient, and I think we've got some honey that's produced on our honey rack. If we take a little wander around here, we can see, oh yes, there we go, we've got a few jars of honey, which is going to keep us nice and fed. We've got all these logs stacked up here from last time, where we cleared out this area here, which is to become our first field. So we really need to get something that's going to help us load up and transport these logs today. So I'm going to head over to the logistics hub and see if they've got something that we can purchase to make our lives a little bit more efficient. Right, here we are at the logistics and logging hub. Now this is now back fully in operation, so they're ready to supply us with some equipment, which is fantastic. And one thing that's come up is this old Volvo LM845 wheel loader and I think this is going to be absolutely fantastic for helping us load up logs into some form of trailer. It's a modest $45,250 so yeah well within our affordability range thanks to all the logs we sold and it's got 98 horsepower so that's going to give us some good pulling power when we've got a hefty log trailer. We're going to need a log fork so we can load up logs using it. And we're going to need a suitable trailer for carrying our logs. So this BSS P93S is going to fit the bill quite nicely. And it's got that old nice look about it. And it's a very modest $3,800. So I'm going to keep it pretty standard, but I've just added a trailer hitch on the back in case we want to convoy the trailers. So here we are. Expensive outlay this morning, first of all, but necessary for us gaining the uh, improvement to efficiency of handling logs and getting them sold. We need to clear out lots more space so we've got room to grow. So let's grab this log fork first of all on the Volvo. And uh, let's take a little look inside the cab. Oh yeah, very nice oldie style wheel loader. I feel like this is going to serve us very well. And if we just do a little reversey, we can hitch up to this trailer 
because it's a dolly trailer, so it's suitable for going on the back of a wheel loader. Just get in range. There we go, perfect. So let's head on back through the forest to our little homestead. We've now got some much bigger and more efficient equipment that's going to help us with the loading. We haven't got anything that's going to help us cut down logs. We're still going to have to use the trusty old chainsaw. But at least with loading, we are going to be set. Wheel loader is home. And we can head on over this way. We need to park the trailer up somewhere suitable. So we can easily load the logs into it. And I'm driving over the stray logs. Now I think this trailer will take probably 5 metre logs so yeah we need to make sure we cut them down to a good size let's drop that off there takes a little while to unhitch but that's all good there we go so yeah i think five meters is the number that we need to stick to so yeah first of all i'm going to have to cut the logs to five meters and to do that i've got a nice little handy tape measure which we've purchased as well so if we, uh, I'll actually start at the other end just so we can test that five meters is a good enough size on one of our thinner sections of the tree. So I'm on the far end of the tree and we can see that we've got length zero meters but the full tree length is 34 meters. So we want to go up till this is at sitting at five meters. I want to make sure I've got the right tree here. There we go, that's bang on five. And this is very light, so we should be able to pick this up and just test that it's the right size for our trailer. Where is our trailer? Ah, it's hidden behind a bush. So let's just load this in here. And there we go. Yep, five meters seems to be the magic number. So I'm going to get stuck in to cutting the logs. I'll start from the heavier end now, so we can get the bigger section of the logs at the uh, bottom of the trailer. So yeah, just be measuring up five meters again cutting and then we can get to loading so leave that with me and i'll see you when we've uh, got some good logs loaded
back from what is I think our fourth or fifth load I can't remember I've lost count because we've done quite a few now but we've done some trips and we've nearly made back the money for the cost of the wheel loader and the log grab so I'm just going to set about loading up this last load I think we've got probably enough wood here for our last load so I'll get that loaded onto the trailer and sold as well there's a, a couple of bits which are pressed right up against the log cabin and I've just driven over a log there hidden in the grass that's why we need to get this cut away really so we can uh, yeah, make some nice terrain around the log cabin and also so we can get prepared for our first field now this uh, log grab has been working pretty well uh, quite happy with it um, the trailer however is only taking five meter logs and I don't think that is the optimal we've not been getting the same sort of value of money as we have for uh, previous logs so I think we're probably going to have to invest at some point in a bigger trailer that can take larger size logs up to six meters maybe even seven or eight just because that I think we get a better price for the logs uh, in that case but yep I'm just going to set about loading this this last volume of logs and then we can take it to get sold and then this afternoon we're going to be turning our attention to making our field uh, well I say making but we're going to be mowing the grass tedding it windrowing it and collecting it up because we want to make use of it and then we'll have a nice clear space for us to plow up uh, hopefully if we get enough time if not probably next time that's the last of the logs loaded and I've been able to pick up a couple of these scrappy bits by hand if they want to stay on there we go oh all off right oh yeah there's another scrappy bit down there they're littering all over the place need to make sure I clear these so they are not going to get in the way of the mower when it comes to it oh here we go like tree jenga all falling off latched up and let's get back to the sell point to get these sold now the wheel loader's done a fantastic job being able to cart these logs it's got a good amount of horsepower 98 to be able to pull this trailer so I think yeah we could invest in a bigger trailer and that would allow us to have larger logs now that would be a bit heavier but I think the Volvo would be able to manage but at some stage we might be able to get a proper log trailer with a uh, truck that can cart them back and forth which would probably be a bit faster as well and that's the last load sold yeah and as mentioned I think because the cut has been five meters it's been uh, less than what we've got before six meters and above sort of six to nine meters seems to be the most optimal log length for the price so yeah we do need to get a longer trailer so we can get a better price for our logs but that's going to do it that's going to give us enough money back that we can now buy some equipment that's going to help us mow ted windrow and collect up the hay we'll park up the volvo and the trailer behind the cabin just so it's kept a little bit safe but it served us very well this morning fantastic and uh, yeah we did sometimes bump the log cabin with the log forks but uh, it has held up well thankfully okay let's jump in the farm all and we can get over to the dealership once more we can drop off the winch and if I just hitch up to the water tank I can show that I've added in a little water pump to the right so we can quite easily fill up once we are connected so we can quickly refill from our little water tap water pump to the right and then we can quickly unload to the open garden and uh, feeding our potatoes to the left so that's pretty handy but they have got enough water so we are pretty good for now let's drop off the winch and get over to the dealership four pallets of potatoes now that's pretty good drop that there and of course we will need to get some sort of shed to house all of our equipment to keep it safe from the elements the winter is coming now let's see what they've got on offer in terms of mowers now there's all sorts of mowers on offer but this agromet 
Z034 Osa 2 is going to probably fit the bill quite nicely. It's an older style one, and I think it's going to be very capable of cutting down some of the bushes that we've got as well. I think we're going to go for red to match our farm all. There we go, $1,200, and we can buy this great mower. 1.8 meters, so that's going to fit the bill quite nicely starting off. There we go, mower hitched up, so let's head on back and we can start cutting. Back at the homestead, and we want to get started in a good place. And I'm going to mow around most places that I can, and I've got a good amount of space too. So I think we'll start somewhere here. So let's get unfolded. That drops down quite nicely. We can get it fired up and lowered away. And then that should start mowing. There we go. We've got some grass coming out. I'll go around the perimeter. Quite slow this, but uh, we will get it done. And it's quite nice that we can see the pulley spinning away at the back there. But it is, I can confirm, hacking down the bushes as well. That's not going to contribute to the grass, but it is going to get rid of them and get them out of the way. So yeah, this is going to clear up space for our first field to go in. So I'm going to spin around here, and I'll see you when we're done. last slither of our mowing and seemingly I think there's a couple of little bits that just uh, won't budge as we're mowing them uh, seems like when I drive over them they do disappear but yeah a couple of little slithers that we can't just quite nab with the mower and it's been a bit of a slow job but such is the nature when you're using old vintage frontier equipment it's uh, not got the same uh, width and speed as modern equipment so yeah that uh, is what we've got to deal with but that's done not too bad a job and as you can see I found a couple of little slithers of wood that were left in there um, so I'm just going to quickly chop those up with the chainsaw and then it's going to be getting this grass all tedded so we can turn it into hay and then it'll be windrowing and then it'll be collecting up and I think I'm going to get a forage wagon of sorts to collect it up there we go that's the little bits of wood and it'll be interesting to see how much grass well hay we end up with let's get this mower parked up and we can get back to the distribution center to get a tedder now what have we got by way of tedders first thing available to us looks to be this far kh4 S, and that's 3.7 meters wide at 2600 so we're going to buy that back with our tedder and it's a nice fit for our tractor nice red color scheme that we've got going on so let's uh, start off somewhere here and we can get this tedded into hay so I think what we'll do is we'll start over in this little corner and if I unfold the tedder we can get it fired up and load away and start making some hay and I'll try not to kick it 
too far into touch, i.e. into the boundary where we can't really get at it. There we go, that's looking pretty decent. So I'm going to get busy tedding, and I'll see you when we're done. Job done. Let's get it folded away and we can crack on by picking up a windrower and yeah, I'm going to have to start stashing stuff closer to the lakeside because we're running out of space. Definitely going to need to get some sheds before the winter is upon us. Back again for windrows. Best one to fit the bill is this Pottinger Svadkriesel 300. So that's 3600 dollars let's buy that again this windrow seems to fit the bill quite nicely and matches the tractor now i'm going to go the other way to start off with this time because we need to try and gather from the edges all of the hay that might have got stuck in the tall grass still there we go we are getting all of the hay from the edge and i'm going to be trying to merge two lanes into one basically so let me get this all cracked into some nice channels so we can then come along and pick it up nice and easy There we go, we've windrowed up some small channels of swath, some hay swath, and yeah, not the neatest, but not the uh, untidiest either. So that's going to do for us to come and pick up, and we are lastly going to need a forage wagon of sorts to come along and collect this hay. Now I don't think we're going to store this hay anywhere, because we don't really have a need for it as yet, we are probably going to sell it. But uh, yeah, let's detach this windrow up and we can get over to the dealership and see what they've got by way of forage wagons. Now for forage wagons, we are going to be getting something that I've not seen before. It's this PK 1.6 and it looks to be a very old style of forage wagon. We can tow it along behind, it takes 50 horsepower to run, so should have enough and it'll take 12,000 litres so that's pretty good and we can buy that and test it out so here is our forage wagon and i've had to buy a draw bar so we can attach it properly seems to have a ring attacher so yeah we needed to get a draw bar just so we could attach it 
right back with the forage wagon and let's get lined up for our first pass I'm going to need to switch it on and lower it away I'm not sure, ok that is going to start picking up the hay fantastic, a bit dusty but it is doing it there we go, we are away so let's get all this hay picked up see how many litres we've got we've already got 10%, a thousand, so we might have to make some trips to go and sell it. That's okay. It's not going to bring us the hugest amount of money, but it is going to bring us some money nonetheless. And I completely missed the corner over there because I'm not really seeing where the pickup is. Yep, leave this with me and we'll get this all picked up and taken to sell. go picked up the last amount of hay it's a couple of little bits left but that's all right nothing wrong with leaving a few little tufts of hay so we did one load and that was 12,000 liters oh, watch out for the deer and now we've got another 5,800 so we've got around 17,800 liters of hay from that very small field which is pretty decent if you ask me so we'll go get this last bit sold I think we got around $1,200 for the first load, so expecting to get around $700 for this one. Let's see. Here we are, so we can line up and sell. And this is a very interesting forage wagon, just for how it collects and then how it empties. Never seen anything like it, so yeah, it fits the bill quite nicely for our vintage frontier farming. Let's jet back to the homestead because it's probably time to end it there for today. It's starting to get dark as it's nearly three o'clock and it's autumn hours so yeah we do lose the light much quicker. Back now from what's been a busy day and I think we can just park the tractor and forage wagon up here. Fantastic! So it's been a busy one. We've collected up all the wood that was left from last time using our brand new wheel loader which uh, yeah, is an older style wheel loader but worked very well with this trailer and then we got cracking with mowing uh, this grass area tedding it into hay and windrowing and forage wagoning it to pick it up so yeah we've got hay and grass making capabilities in our inventory now which is really nice and we've got a good amount of potatoes to start living ourselves but that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed watching. If you have, remember to drop a like. And if you've got any tips, tricks or things you'd like me to do, then feel free to leave a comment. But until next time on the Frontier Farmer, I will see you then. Cheers all. Bye bye.